So let's pray, and then we'll navigate this section of Scripture together. At this point in his life, Daniel's chief concern has become his people and their homeland, specifically the city of Jerusalem. And so he consulted the writings of Jeremiah the prophet, the very same writings that we have in our Old Testament today. Jeremiah chapters 25 and 29 tell of how the exile of the Judean people would last for 70 years. And by Daniel's estimation, that 70 years is about up. And so after consulting God's word, Daniel decided to go to God in prayer, kept your word and done to us and our rulers exactly as you warned. Therefore, the Lord has brought upon us the disaster he prepared. The Lord our God was right to do all of these things, for we did not obey him. And how often, how often do people say things like that? Many times we refuse to take responsibility for our actions, don't we? We're very tempted to pass the buck, as it were. And when God disciplines, we blame God and we act as if it was God who was the one who was being unjust. But God had warned the people of Israel many times. And at the conclusion of Daniel's prayer, he says this in verse 19. He says, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay, O my God. For your people and your city bear your name. To this point, what we learn is that God is righteous to judge and forgive. Deuteronomy 32.4 says, He is the rock his deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright he is. But then in Psalm 711, it says, God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. And then in Lamentations 3, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. And sometimes we read verses like that, we think that there's a contradiction, but it's not because of who God is. It's His character. He is righteous and good. We know what good is because God is good. The very meaning of good is defined by God's character. God forgives because of His righteous character, and He must judge sin as well. But Jesus Christ has overcome he has overcome and he will return. And the restoration we experience now will be even greater than we can possibly imagine when Christ returns. And though we wait, and though we face trials, we live in the age of the year of Jubilee. Our God will never leave us nor forsake us. He is always with us. He has overcome will continue to overcome, and we too, therefore, will overcome. There is an eternity waiting for us, and I don't know about you, but I can't wait. And so, in the meantime, while we're waiting for our opportunity to join Him in eternity, in the meantime, we worship and we wait. We will acknowledge what Christ has done, and we will acknowledge what He has promised is yet to come. And so I close with these words reminding us all, and though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your gift of salvation. We thank you for the forgiveness of sin.